Hello Moonsters! Welcome to Clue 5 and our lace tutorial. Today, or for this clue, you get to choose between two options for the lace. We have the Ocean Waves lace, which is actually really simple. It looks delicate and intricate and it is. It's a beautiful lace, but you'll find that if you're a beginner knitter or you just want some chill out knitting, that this will be great for you. You'll enjoy it. Or for those who want a little bit more of a challenge, we have this beautiful moon lace. This is really lovely. It does take some concentrating and yeah, you definitely need to pay attention with it. So I suggest that you swatch that lace first just to get a little understanding of how the circles are formed and how it flows. It's a bit of a tricky lace to read at the start and I think doing a swatch, taking the time to swatch will help you understand that and feel confident when you're knitting it. And then you can tackle the 471 stitch row and get going on that lace. It's beautiful and it's worth it and it may be a little daunting, but I think it's worth having a try. Have a try at the swatch and see how you go. Uh, so this video includes a few tips and also techniques. I start off with talking about stitch markers, then lifelines. I'll go into the moon lace and talk about some of the stitches that have worked, some tips, um, go through that with you and then a shorter segment for the ocean waves lace. It's quite simple and it's um, yeah, not a lot to really tackle in that particular lace. And then I'll finish off with the Pico bind off. I hope that you'll feel a bit more confident tackling perhaps the moon lace or even your first ever lace after watching this video and look forward to seeing your beautiful projects. I'll be back next week with the optional clue six. So what will that be? I'm a big fan of using stitch markers. I think it's worth using them for lace repeats or any pattern repeat and just to keep you on track, it's easy to see where you're starting to go awry if you're using markers to mark them out. It's a 12 stitch repeat for the moon lace and a 13 stitch repeat for the waves. So you'll have need quite a few stitch markers to mark all those repeats, um, probably around 36 to 40. So I, I tend to like these simple ring stitch markers when I need so many. They're just jewellery findings. They're closed jump rings, so they don't have any little bit that will catch on the yarn. And they're pretty affordable. You can buy a bag of them in bulk from Etsy sellers or a jewellery or craft supply place and fairly inexpensive. What's also good about these little stitch markers is that if I get to a place in my knitting where I need to use a stitch from an earlier repeat for the next repeat for a decrease or similar. So for example, I need this stitch from the repeat before I'm bringing in, I can easily just slip it over the marker, slide the marker over and then work that decrease if that needs to happen. So it's just a bit of an easier way if you have the dangly markers, it's a bit harder to slip a stitch over because you're going to have that dangle in the way. And yeah, it's just gonna be a bit harder to slip a stitch over. The dangly markers can still be great for lace repeats because it does prevent a yarn over from slipping over. So for example, might have yarn over the marker, knit a stitch, and then by the time you got to the other, the wrong side, that yarn over might have actually jumped over the, the stitch marker and, and that's one of the common ways of getting mixed up in a lace knitting pattern that you can't work out where that stitch came from so it helps to be checking the chart and figuring out where that yarn over should be 
but sometimes it can actually be really helpful to be using this kind of marker just to prevent that yarn over from slipping over so it's less likely to jump. So both markers are really useful, but I find particularly for the moon lace and needing so many of them that these little closed rings are perfect. Unfortunately, we often need to rip our work out and go back and start over if we've made a big mistake or can't quite figure out where we've gone off track. And for some, ripping out their work isn't a problem. They feel pretty comfortable doing that. And for others, um, a lifeline can be really helpful. So a lifeline is a thread of yarn threaded through your work and then left there with the ends dangling. You continue to work stitches, but don't knit in the lifeline. Just leave it there threaded through a row of stitches. And it means that later, if you need to rip back, you can just come back, rip back to that row and those stitches will be held with the lifeline and become much easier to pick up and put back on the needles. So it can just be a really easy way especially as I say with the lace where you've got complicated stitches, it can be a bit harder to keep track. And with a lifeline, you can also catch stitch markers and leave them dangling in the lifeline and then have your repeats marked already when you rip back as well. So with a shawl with this many stitches, I think it is good to consider putting a lifeline in unless you feel pretty confident with ripping out and tinking back. It just takes a couple of minutes to add in a lifeline. It's definitely worth taking that, that little extra time to do so that you feel confident in your work and make it easier for you when you rip back. So if you're a beginner lace knitter and working a simple lace, I think it's still worth considering a lifeline. And for a more complicated lace, it will definitely be worth considering. One of the ways to put in a lifeline is by threading through the little hole at the end of circular needles. Not all of them have them, but some do. And you can thread through the end something thin like, I'm using a, a lace yarn here, a cotton lace, or dental floss. I've knit across the row that I want to put the lifeline through, which is row five of this pattern. So now it's just a matter of holding on to one end and pulling the stitches through, catching the shorter end, bring that shorter end through here and then take it out of the needle. So I'm left with this yarn hanging out of each end of the stitches. It's a little bit tricky to see, but so the lifeline, quite hard to see, is threaded through all the stitches. It's also thread through the stitch markers. And what I'll do on the next row, the wrong side row, is drop those stitch markers with the lifeline and add in some fresh stitch markers so that when I pull out, when I rip out, if I need to use the lifeline, I'll be able to rip back and have stitch markers still in the work with, with a big lace project like this, that will be quite handy. So I'm going to purl across the three slipped stitches, wrong side row here, and it's continue to purl. Come to that stitch marker and just drop it and let it dangle with the lifeline. 
put in a fresh one and continue across the row. Another way to add a lifeline is using a tapestry needle and some waste yarn, or you could also use the floss and you'll just manually insert it through a row. So I've just finished knitting a row and what I'll do is slip that along the cable. Find there's enough of a gap there. And I have the option here to either include the stitch marker, but remember to drop it on the next row or leave it on the cable and not take it into the lifeline. Just pull it through as you go. Have a, a longer tail so that you just get a single thread coming through and continue on. Once you get to the end, pull it through and off the needle and just leave the lifeline dangling on either end. I chose not to include the stitch markers this time. And as I showed before, I did include them in the one before. So now that I have a new lifeline in, I can take out the one that I added earlier because I clearly won't need it now. And to do that, all I do is just pull out the yarn or string and let those stitch markers fall out. And now I just have one lifeline in there. I can reuse this one another time. Working on the moon lace swatch, I've cast on the 39 stitches and purled across that first wrong side row, slipping the last three stitches, which is this row here. We'll be working down, forming those cute little moon circles. And yeah, I think it's worth swatching just to get a, a feel for it so that you feel confident when you're working the long rows. But the long rows are very repetitive you just keep working the same repeat and it's only 12 stitch repeat. So I think it's not overly daunting. It's just about being methodical and taking your time and feeling confident perhaps by having a lifeline and stitch markers to help you along the way. I'll work through a couple of rows to demonstrate some of the stitches that may be new to you. Starting with row one. So I'll lace row one, knit three, knit front back, which you will already have done many times for this project. Knit two together, knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over. Knit to slip, slip, knit, slip, slip, knit, yarn over. And now there's a purl two together. So bring that yarn back over and to the front of the work. So you have your yarn over there. Purl two together. Now it's purl three together, so keep the yarn at the front of the work and purl those three stitches together. And we're at the start of the, the lace repeat now. So we've worked the first part of the row. I'll place a stitch marker here for the start of that repeat. If I had the 471 stitches on the needles for the the shawl then I'd be continuing to mark repeats after every 12 stitch repeat. The next stitch is 
purl two together, purl two together, and then a yarn over and a knit two together. So that yarn needs to go to the back of the work. I just hold it here while I get my knit two together ready. And then I just bring it over and around. So there's the yarn over and the knit two together. Another yarn over. And then into this stitch, going to knit front, back, front, which will increase that one stitch to three stitches. So two stitches increased. Knit into the front. I use my finger to push it around and knit into the back and then knit into the front again and take that stitch off the left needle. So here's the three stitches I just worked. Knit front, back, front. Yarn over. Slip, slip, knit. Yarn over and bring that yarn to the front for the purl two together. Keep the yarn at the front for purl three together. And that's the end of the repeat. So we'll mark the end of the repeat and continue to the end of the row. On several of the rows in this pattern, there'll be stitches worked across a repeat. So for example, this knit three together here on row two is using a stitch from the previous repeat and two stitches from this repeat. So if you're using stitch markers, you'll need to move them to work that stitch. And that also happens on some future rows, which I think is why it's really helpful to swatch this and just get a feel for it so that you can see how the pattern evolves so that you understand where those stitches need to be slipped. I've started row two. I've knit to one stitch before the repeat and I'm ready to work that decrease which is knit three together so I'll bring the yarn to the front for that. As I mentioned in the little segment about stitch markers I like to use these small ones so that I can just easily slip the stitch over that needs to be worked and then bring the stitch marker over here onto the right needle and work that stitch. Alternatively you can slip that stitch take the marker out, switch that stitch back over and place the marker back on. And then knit those three stitches together and purl to one stitch before the marker and repeat that process. I've knit ahead, I finished row three and I'm at the end of row four and I realized I didn't show the pearl front back, so I just wanted to show that. And that's very similar to knit front back. Pearl into the front of the stitch, then pearl into the back of the stitch, and take those off the needles, and then slip the last three stitches. Up to row five now. And we've increased enough stitches at the edges to add in an extra stitch repeat. So there's an extra 12 stitch repeat here. In this row also, we'll be working across the marker. So one stitch will come over into the repeat and be worked as a central double decrease. You can see that it's the two decreased stitches from the row before and that it's got a pearl bump there, it was knit on the wrong side row, that they will form that decrease, which in the shawl creates this little section here, just so you know where we're at. Uh, there's not many new stitches in this row either. So 
I just mainly wanted to show you the central double decrease and the new marker position. So start the row with the three I chord stitches, a knit front back, a knit and a knit two together. And this is where the new repeat will start. So we'll place a marker here and work. There'll be three repeats now in this swatch. The first stitch is a yarn over, then we have knit two together, a yarn over, and then purl five stitches. So bring the yarn back over and to the front of the work and purl those five stitches. Yarn over again and a slip slip knit. So get the slip slip knit started. Slip, slip, and then bring the yarn over to the back of the work and complete that stitch. Another yarn over, and this is the central double decrease. I'll slip that stitch over my stitch marker. Take two stitches off the needle. So to do that, I knit into the second stitch first and through the first and slide them off the needle. I don't actually work the yarn. So when I say knit, I mean slip those two stitches off. Then I knit the third stitch and that's the stitch that was on the other side of the marker. And then bring those two slipped stitches over the knit stitch and it creates that lovely central double decrease. I'll continue that same process along to here and then add another marker here and carry on. So I finished row five and I'll work the next wrong side row, which is pretty straightforward. You'll be Knitting on the wrong side row across those stitches that you purled on row five. And that is the start of these moons. So they'll be reverse stocking it on the right side. And I'm up to row seven now and another decrease that will cross over the three stitches. I'll slip that over, ready to work that knit three together. There's a yarn over before that at the end of that row, so I'll just work that yarn over and secure it in with my thumb and knit three together. That occurs again up here. That stitch will be slipped over and worked as a knit three together at the start of the repeat. The slipping of the markers occurs a few more times in the pattern. So it's worked here on row two, here on row five, here on row seven, here on row 11, here on row 15 and here on row 17. So you just need to keep that in mind when you're working those rows. And that's all for the new stitches to be demonstrated. And you'll see after this row, your lace is really starting to take shape. You'll be able to get much more of a sense of how the, those moons are forming and to more readily be able to read your knitting The Ocean Waves lace is a lovely, easy lace. It's a perfect first lace and has fantastic results. So I think it's great to dive in to lace with this, or if you just want to continue a relaxing project, this would be a great lace for you. I'll demonstrate my swatch here. 
there's um, not, a, not a lot happening in this lace, so it'll be a quick little demo. I've cast on the swatch stitches of 19 and worked the pearl row, worked rows 7 and 8, and I'm up to row 9. So I'll begin by knitting the three I-cord stitches and then the start of the repeat. So if I was using markers between the repeats, I'd have the marker there. Knit four stitches. And then the first decrease, which is knit two together. So just knit into the two stitches and have decreased to one. Then slip, slip, knit is worked. Slip, slip, then bring that left needle under the two stitches and knit into the two stitches and work back across to the end. I'm now up to row 13. I just knit ahead rows 10, 11 and 12. And so there's an extra set of the decreases there, which means overall the number of stitches have decreased by four in total. So the 13 stitch pattern repeat is now nine stitches with three stitches on either end. And you can see the decreases are creating the shaping, creating that wave pulling in there, which is what will form these lovely effective waves. So next we'll be working on the eyelet row, which also includes the same decreases. The addition of the eyelets will bring the stitch count back up to 13 stitches for the repeats. So I'll just demonstrate that. Knit three and then yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit two together, slip, slip, knit, oops, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one. So that's a total of six yarn overs added there and then slip the final three and purl back across that row. And a little Pico bind off tutorial, which I'll show on the ocean waves swatch. It's slightly different for the ocean moons. You'll work quite a lot fewer picots, just one per repeat. So just be sure to check that you're needing the right instructions. With the ocean waves, we start with casting off two stitches. So knit one, knit another, pull that first stitch over the second and repeat two stitches cast off. Then for the pico part, which this part's the same for the moon as well, you slide that stitch back over onto the left needle, insert the right needle through behind that stitch, knit and twist and place that on the left needle and repeat so that you've now created two new stitches which will become the little pico bump. Now you cast off, bind off the number of stitches stated which for this is six stitches first. So bind off six stitches one two, three, four, five, 
six. So in the pattern, there's two central, the decrease stitches, and then a stitch on either side. The sixth stitch is the one before those. Place that on the left needle and again cast on two stitches. And then this time, according to the pattern, it's bind off seven stitches. So knit one, knit a second one, bind off, and that's one bound off. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, place that over there and then repeat this time six stitches will be bound off so cast on two And that's repeated until there's three stitches left, which are the I-cord stitches, and they are just bound off as normal. So continue binding off the last three stitches. And when it comes to blocking your project, it's worth taking the time to pull out each of those Pico points for the best effect. So these were pulled out. And here I haven't pulled out each point, but I have chosen the center of the wave. So the decreases are here, and this is the center of the wave, just to give it a lovely delicate effect could pull out each of the picots and it would be more intricate but I quite like the little lumps and then the long pull out so it's really up to you how you block it but definitely worth pulling out some of those points mm -hmm. 